Never build belts or pipes on the floor ever again, because it creates unnecessary obstacles making it harder to move around. To better understand this problem we can take a look at a couple more examples. The bottom line is, it's bad practice and they don't need to remind you that the most important task a pioneer has is to be efficient. The smartest way to solve this problem is to carefully plan your factories and implement blueprints as much as possible. To lift things off the ground, we'll of course need to employ some type of a supporting structure. You can go as high as you want and even create stackable blueprints for unlimited vertical reach. But for this example I'll stick to 12 meters, since most production levels will have at least this much vertical clearance, you can build the supports without clipping while still getting a big enough gap underneath it. I'll start by creating a solid base, making it wider at the bottom to facilitate stability, then I'll place a temporary column on the side to help with alignment and fill in the rest of the pillar. Once we run into alignment issues we can solve them with some janky bottom piece adjustments. Then it's time to add some details to the sides with painted beams. It's important to end them 1 meter down from the top for small square signs to snap properly. Then we can finally snap beam and pieces in place and set the signs to emit a vibrant orange color. After pasting in color settings to all the signs, we can save this blank blueprint to be used as baseline in the next step. At this point most of the heavy lifting is over and we can use the baseline print inside the designer to customize the structure to our satisfactory. First we need to add some pipeline supports to use as a height reference, then use barriers to match the height and use nudge to get it centered. Double check the alignment by building a pipeline in the gap and after confirming it works as intended we have to repeat the process on the other side so the pipe has something to carry the liquids in within the wall. At this point our support wall is a little deformed so we need to restore it before we save it as a new blueprint to be used in the next step. You can shape this into many things, but the most useful one is probably a pipeline fork. You can start by placing two of the previous blueprints offset from the center and connecting them in the middle. Then add an alignment piece on the grid below so we can easily snap the pipeline splitter on the pipe. For some strange reason the game doesn't allow the second one to snap to the same point so the only option is to use the eyeballing technique. Now we can clean up the designer and save the blueprint as a new one. This gives you a chance in redemption by protecting you from building a nasty floor pipe ever again. But some priests would say you also need to click the subscribe button to atone for doing so in the past. Now if you want to avoid making an unspeakable spaghetti mess we need to organize conveyor belts in the same way. Luckily it's easy to do thanks to the blank support blueprint we saved earlier. We start by placing it in the middle of the designer and building some reference pieces in front of it. At this point it is obvious that this won't work as it did with the pipelines and we need to apply some more janky adjustments to the bottom section of the pillar before we can proceed. Then it's just a matter of finding the right height to attach the ceiling mounts to, checking the alignment with the reference pieces, adding some more accent lights with matching lighting colors, cleaning up the designer and saving the blueprint. Now we can move on to the most advanced part of this build. If you manage to do it on your own you can definitely call yourself a verified senior pioneer. The most critical part of working with blueprints involving belts is knowing which direction they're going. To solve this problem we can take advantage of the little arrow that appears when you try to place the blueprint. All we need to do is orient our support so they're looking at the designer terminal and build our belts going in that direction. The same logic also applies to other components, so we can easily build structures with slightly more advanced features like resource splitting or merging. I probably don't have to say it, but color coding your blueprints, for example green for merging and red for splitting can also increase efficiency. If you don't feel like building these yourself you can grab them from my discord. Now thank you for your eyeballs and I'll see you in the next one.